Well, a very special edition of the London Report today. British Prime Minister David Cameron has agreed to have a chat to us here at 10 Downing Street. Let's see if he's at home. As a lover of sport, the British PM has had a dream run during his almost five years in office. Ringside seats at the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games, at Wimbledon and at Lords for the Ashes. An England and Australia Rugby World Cup final at Twickenham would be a nice addition to the list. First things first, he has to win the election due in May. Prime Minister, thanks very much for your time. It seems like the Olympics are just over and here we are, another uh, world-class sporting event. How much are you looking forward to the World Cup? Hugely looking forward to it. I mean, I think these big sporting events are great for our country. We had the Olympic Games, we had the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, we've had the Invictus Games where uh, a number of uh, teams from, from around the, the Commonwealth and other countries came. And now with the Rugby World Cup, I think it's going to be hugely exciting. What about your rugby heritage? As a, as a boy, did you play? I did. Strangely enough, I played hooker, actually. You wouldn't think, uh, looking at my size now, but I was, uh, when I was 13, I was, quite, a, I was quite, quite short, so I was put in that position. So a lot of time uh, in the middle of some pretty tough scrums. I enjoyed my rugby. Uh, I probably played until I was about 15, 16, and then more tennis and football and other sports. But I think to watch the modern game is absolutely thrilling because the pace uh, that the game moves at and also the physicality, to use that terrible word, of the way people throw themselves into the tackles and throw themselves into the game. I think it has become more and more exciting to watch as a sport. And your son, Elwyn, has been inspired, was inspired by the British and Irish Lions win over Australia. It would have been nice if he could find other areas of inspiration, but that's all right. He's playing. Well, we've got a great club scene in Britain, and he goes along to a local club and, and plays some of the tag rugby, because this wasn't available when I was small. We just, you were straight into tackling. But I think tag has managed to get more young people going earlier. And it's been interesting to watch, you know, seven, eight-year-olds getting stuck into rugby, which I think is very good for English uh, rugby and for the, all the home nations. And we look forward to seeing the benefit of that uh, in years to come when we're, we're up against uh, other teams. Indeed. Now, you had the British and Irish Lions here as a reception. One of the enduring images out of that, and he, he copped a bit for it, was the... The bunny ears, Manu Tuolangi's yeah. bunny ears. You were all right with that one. I, I would forgive him anything because uh, when you see the pace that he brings to the game, uh, I, I'd forgive him anything. They were a great bunch. What struck me a lot about that meeting was just how many had injuries and broken this is and pulled that. So, I mean, the, the, the physical nature of this game now is incredibly tough and they are a remarkable bunch of people. They have to recover very quickly, but it was great to have them all here and uh, look forward to seeing all of the World Cup rugby teams are coming into to England. Indeed. Now, a very tough pool that England finds themselves in with Australia and Wales. A um, couple of questions. Which two teams advance out of that pool? I've learnt not to make forecasts <laughs> or predictions. Uh, obviously, I want all the home nations to do well, but uh, as a, an English resident, uh, an Englishman, but I've got I've got Welsh blood too. Um, I'll be cheering on England, obviously, um, but I'm hopeful, hopeful for us. Now, there's always a uh, great rivalry between Australia and England, um, particularly this time around because of that pool situation. Now, I know that you had a small wager with uh, New Zealand Prime Minister John Key a couple of years ago. Any chance of a, a similar wager with Tony Abbott? Well, I promised John Key that whoever won, we had to wear each other's cufflinks at Prime Minister's question, so I ended up with some... Uh, some very fetching Kiwi cufflinks on. Uh, as long as I don't have to wear Tony Abbott's uh, swimming shorts, I'm willing to make a similar, I'm willing to make a similar bet um, with, with Tony. Also, I'm not sure I'd take him on at many sports. I mean, he is phenomenally fit. And uh, I know uh, when it comes to running, cycling, swimming, I, I think I have to find another sport to take him on at. Last one for you. Uh, Australians will find it very easy to sit in the middle of the night and, and watch the World Cup. A little bit harder to come here and be part of it. A lot of people watching this. What would you say to people who are thinking about coming to London and, and being part of the World Cup? I would say please come. You'll get a very warm welcome. You'll find that uh, many of your fellow countrymen and women are already here and making a huge contribution to our economy. I know it's expensive, expensive to, to, to travel, but we'll make it worth your while. It'll be a great festival of sport. And I think British crowds are some of the best in the world for really generating the excitement around these big games.